The main effect of infective endocarditis is an infection of the inner lining of the heart's chambers and valves, endocardium, caused by bacteria, fungi, or germs that enter through the bloodstream. It is life-threatening if it is not treated quickly because it can damage or destroy your heart valves. It may cause enlarged spleen, kidney damage, blood clot in a lung artery, pulmonary embolism, pockets of collected pus, abscesses that develop in the heart, brain, lungs, and other organs, stroke and heart problems such as heart murmur, heart valve damage, and heart failure. Infective endocarditis has an incidence rate of about 3 to 10 per 100,000 of the population that have a mortality rate of up to 30% when reaching the 30-day mark. 25 to 30% of cases are now accounted as healthcare-associated endocarditis. This is due to the use of intravenous lines and intracardiac devices. Most studies done have found that the most prevalent cause of infective endocarditis is Staphylococcus aureus. Spending on infective endocarditis hospitalizations in the U.S. have risen from $1.56 billion in 2003 to $2.34 billion in 2016. A study done in Finland noticed an increase in the infective endocarditis patients that were in the younger category. When thinking of environmental impact, the in-home environment is not what comes to mind. But infective endocarditis has a great impact on this environment. Studies show that the normal routines such as flossing and brushing your teeth can cause gingival bleeding and be responsible for a higher number of circulating bacteria. At the same time, Periodontal and apical procedures could induce gingival or mucosal trauma. This could produce transient bacteremia. Endocarditis is mainly caused by bacteria, fungi, or any other germ from different parts of your body, which spread through your bloodstream and attach to the damaged areas of an individual's heart. Some common symptoms are flu-like symptoms, chest and joint pain, fatigue, and shortness of breath. Less common symptoms are unexpected weight loss, blood in the urine, tenderness of the spleen, and red spots on the soles of the feet and the palms of the hands. In the two graphs shown, we are comparing data of incidence rates as well as death rates due to infective endocarditis. The data shown on the right is from a study done in the United States showing the split of female and male patients. As you can see, there is a steady increase in both the incidence rate and death rate of infective endocarditis cases. The graph shown on the left is from a study done in Finland. You can see that the rates for this study are not steadily increasing, but instead they are both fluctuating. It was reported that doctors in Tennessee, as well as Massachusetts, were making decisions on who should and should not be allowed to receive a repeat surgery for endocarditis reinfection. The doctors were declining these surgeries for individuals that were illicit substance users. Choices like this being made by physicians reflect on the healthcare system and their treatment of individuals who struggle with substance abuse disorders. The physiological events compromised by infective endocarditis are the production of heart murmurs, anemia in patients, embolic phenomena, endocardial vegetation, which possibly results in valvular incompetence or obstruction, myocardial abscess, or mycotic aneurysm. Damaged endothelial cells release tissue factor, which could produce sterile fibrin platelet vegetation. Infection of the endocardium could originate from distant infected sites. 
Severe valvular regurgitation will hinder the performance of the heart and could lead to heart failure. Moving on to the pathologies of endocarditis. Myocardial abscesses with tissue destructions and sometimes conduction system abnormalities. Sudden severe valvular regurgitation causing heart failure and death. Prostatic valve infections are particularly likely to evolve valve ring abscesses, obstructions, vegetations, myocardial abscesses, and myocardic aneurysms manifested by valve obstructions and dehances and conduction disturbances. System consequences of endocarditis are due to embolization of affected material from the heart valve, immunomedicated phenomena, bright sided lesions typically produce septic pulmonary emboli, which may result in pulmonary infections, pneumonia, or amphenia. Left-sided lesions may embolize uh, any tissue, particularly the kidney, spleen, and central nervous system. Mitocardic aneurysms can form in any major artery. Continuous and renal emboli are common. Diffuse may result from immune complex deposition. Risk factors that occur with endocarditis. Ineffective endocarditis can occur at any age. It is not hereditary or part of genetics unless the patient is immunocompromised, which makes them most likely to develop endocarditis. Also, if there is a history of bad oral care. Men are affected about twice as often as women. It is most likely to occur to those that are intravenous drug abusers, immunocompromised patients, and patients with prostatic heart valves and other intercardiac devices are at higher risk. With mental disorders, there are no mental disorders involved with infective endocarditis. The environment plays a role with endocarditis generally occurs with when bacteria, fungi, or other germs from the environment or other part of the, your body, such as your mouth, spread through your bloodstream and attach to your heart valve. For examples, these procedures could be dental procedures, contaminated needles, or car catheters. What is being done to prevent an effect of endocarditis? Preventive dental examination and therapy before surgery to repair heart valve or congenital heart lesions is recommended. Dental and continuous hygiene is recommended for the general population, but particularly for patients at intermediate risk, those with native valve disease. The American Heart Association recommends antimicrobial prophylaxis for patients at high risk of an adverse outcome from an effective endocarditis. Procedures requiring antibiotic prophylaxis, prophylactic antibiotics regimen. Methods to individually employ to decrease contamination of infective endocarditis. Since invasive dental procedures can open risks to possible bacterial mia, whomever undergoing such procedures are at risk of infective endocarditis. Methods can be integrated to decrease such contamination such as seeking a professional dentist on a contingual basis. Regularly brush and floss and make sure that dentures fit properly. Tools. There are many tools that can be used to test for endocarditis, such as blood culture tests, which are used to identify germs in the, blood, in the bloodstream, echocardiogram, which uses sound waves to produce images of the heart, Electrocardiogram, which is the simplest and fastest test used to evaluate the heart, chest rays, and computerized tomography. In our community, I believe we should consider evaluating older adults to the elderly of the community, which most often on a peri periodical basis, endocarditis is prone to most often appear in older adults over the age of 60. Methods to actively decrease contamination. As individuals, we need to be on the lookout for any symptoms of endocarditis. And whenever having unexplained symptoms, such as fevers, night sweats, or swelling, include a diagnostic for endocarditis. Good oral health is crucial for prevention and reducing risk of bacterial endocarditis. Ensuring that you are receiving dental care regularly is important. Tools we can use to test for infective endocarditis in our communities. Blood culture tests, which are used to identify germs in the bloodstream. According to mdsave.com, a blood culture test can range from $11 to $43.
This price excludes additional costs for microscopy or pathogen identification. Echocardiogram is another alternative, which uses sound waves to produce images of the heart. And according to mdsave.com, echocardiography with or without color droplet ranges from $639 to $1,165 in Florida. Electrocardiogram is actually one of the simplest and fastest tests used to evaluate the heart. The electrocardiogram is ranging from $80 to $138. Test rays, another great alternative. It is a test dedicated to imaging which uses x-rays to look at the structure and organs in the chest. Prices in Florida can range from $101 to $212 to get a chest x-ray. And lastly, computerized tomography. It is a test which uses x-rays to take pictures from different angles of your body. Computed tomography scans range from $330 to $1,993 in price. Business opportunities that can flourish. A business application can be integrating a type of renewal concept to the dental industry. Dental offices can now register and both imply patients to get a test compatible with endocarditis. Marketing can be done by advertising and advising patients of the probability of endocarditis. This will not only help the community, but it will help benefit the dental community as well. Areas that should be tested for infective endocarditis in our communities. We should continue to test in clinics, hospitals, and third-party registered clinics. An integration would be at-home access to such testing for endocarditis. Speaking, sharing information to the elderly in places with such demographics.